Hey everybody, what's going on out there? I'm the dude, and no Monica. I don't know what's up with her tonight. She said she wasn't feeling well, and she's probably got the COVID. I want to thank everybody for showing up. Uh, let's take a look out there. Who is out there? We got Jared from Frack Daddy, grilling and chilling with Coleman. Coleman, how are you? Mr. Berries, how are you? Patrick, Patty Joe cooking. That's my cuz down there, this, this cat right here. Cousin. Uh, yep. Nice. Uh, we got Craig from Behind the Garage Barbecue. And I saw Rob out there earlier. I know Kent was out there. So welcome, everybody, to the show. We have two guests, Uno and Dos guests tonight. And the first one is, you know him, the man, Uncle Steve from Uncle Steve Shake. And the second one is my sister from another Mista, one of my <laughs> dearest and best friends in the whole wide world. You've seen her on other episodes of The Dude's Kitchen, my friend Kelly. Kelly, how are you tonight? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. good. So the reason why Kelly's on here, she's going to show us how to make some Christmas drinks. And I always say, if you're going to travel, take your personal bartender with her, with you. Here she is, guys. Actually, when we travel, I'm like, I make the drinks more than you do. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm quite I'm all not right. capable of doing Well, this. guys, without further ado, let's bring Uncle Steve on. Uncle Steve, what's happening? How hey, guys. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. What's new? Oh man, same old good stuff. I'm I'm sitting just just setting up. I'm looking how the light reflects down. I realize my forehead has turned into a five head. Yeah, so, there's uh, like a shine going on there, dude. That is. That, it's well, you know, and it's it's a lot of work. Let me see if I can just. <laughs> You're fine. No, you know the the, the the makeup makeup and powder department they, they they're lacking, so uh, that's all right. Time to fire them and get some new people. I know it. I know it. Yeah. I just decided to do it myself. Hey, yeah, I love ain't nobody, that. Ain't nobody can help this face. <laughs> what do you think, Uncle Steve? Man, I love that. I, I, yeah. I, I'm gonna tell you what. I ordered those. Uh, order those flags from a, I think a company in China. It's somewhere they get here fast. They're cheap, and and I hand them out like 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 the cold. And yeah. I just love seeing them. I love it right there. So thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, Uncle Steve, let's get into the questions because I know you're a busy right. man, and I thank you for your time. Thank By you the way, it. guys, if anybody has any questions, <laughs> Kelly's going to be running those tonight. So just do like a hashtag, dude, and uh, she'll she'll be looking. Uh, looks like we got some other people. Josh from Adventure Roads, thank you. My brother Stephen from Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline, how are you, sir? All right, let's get to this. Uncle Steve, what inspired you to start your shape company? Uh, I'll say my lack of artistic ability. <laughs> uh, gr growing up as a kid, uh, I loved uh, I love building, painting. Yeah, I don't want to say sculpting because that makes me kind of sound frilly, but sculpting. I love making things with my hands, and uh, and uh, and building furniture, working, and and it kind of evolved into a little bit of work in the kitchen. And start right. again, it, it's, you know, you, you make things s to please other people. And I found that I, I, I could make this one special mixture with some seasoning and it made a lot of people happy. Now it was just for popcorn and pork tenderloin, but boy, they'd eat it. And, Oh, this is great. This is awesome. And, and that's it. Just a, another artistic outlet. You might say just kind of a, my, my family calls it an ego boost because it, another reason to put my name all over stuff, but um, <laughs> it, it is, it's, it's, you know, making other people happy, kind of an achievement. There you go. I dig it. I dig it. Yep. What was your first shake? Original. Yeah. That, that's kind of a, a tough that's one a right staple. there. If you don't have yeah. a bottle of original oh. uncle Steve shake in your pantry, you're not eating. You might as well get every meal at a gas station, that little hot dog rotisserie that rolls round and round. Mm -hmm. um, I made that for about 25 years. No and I would make it a pound here. May If I was coming up on the holidays, maybe two pounds to give little bottles to, to friends. And it was the wow, original awesome. forever. Okay. Amazing. Sounds like it was received very well because that was my next question is how was it received? So. Hey, well, two birds with one stone, man. If it had been dog dirt, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Uncle Steve, what was your biggest struggle getting your line of shakes off the ground? Uh, 
You know, that's a toughie because uh, marketing wise, I love doing the marketing side. Uh, it helps that I have a great product to market. But, uh, you know, growing up, I was one of those that, you know, the, the proverbial, I could sell ice to an Eskimo. And uh, so the marketing part w was not that tough. It was, I'll say the know-how. You know, I, I have something great. I have a great product. Now what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. uh, had it been 15 years earlier when you didn't have the Internet to look everything up, never would have happened. You know, it just so I, I think it's the the, the know-how of exactly what you have to follow, what you have to put together, how to get it into retail stores. You can't just walk up to a store and say, hey, boy, this sure tastes good. You want some? You want to sell it in your store? So, yeah, you know. You are in a couple of retail outlets, right? We are. We are. And, and, and it's spreading. I get a couple calls a week now of mom and pop shops, which is what I like more. Um you know, down, down here in Texas, we have Kroger, we have HEB, we have some big, big stores. And I just haven't gotten interested in those. I've actually been approached by one. And number one, I can't do the volume yet because I still do everything front to back by myself. Okay. Uh, and I say by myself, I have a few people that help me, but we're not a mass producer because I'm not ready to turn it over to somebody else and let them put out something that I can't guarantee the quality on. That's but, one of um, the things I love about your shakes is that I, yeah. knew, I knew that you did them yourself. And, yeah. you know, you can go to the store and get Joe Blow shakes, right? Or uh, mm -hmm. rubs, whatever. And I used to, but man, once I discovered yours, they sit in the back. I might give yeah. them away as Christmas presents. Hey, look what I got for that's, you. That, that's, that's fine with me, yeah. Actually, speaking of that, your shakes are perfect for Christmas. And I did I yes. did a bunch on Saturday during Josh's live. Yes. Um, in your opinion, what would be the perfect Christmas combination? If I could pick four, or if you could pick four, what would you Okay. Pick? I wouldn't say four. Okay. I would say either five or eight. And here's why. Uh, on the website, we run a, the special sampler packet. It's the four-ounce bottles. Uh, and it's the five main flavors, original, spicier, gator shake, sweet and spicy, and thick meat. Those we run at a discounted price, and you get all five. Okay. Um, cool. I actually, today and then tomorrow morning, I'll finish the artwork and put it out. We're doing a special one of everything, because we have eight flavors now, counting the three competition. You get a four-ounce bottle of everything eight bottles. It fits in our shipping package. So it's still only $8 to ship. And I discount it out. So either one of those. Now, the other option that I could recommend, I love, uh, you know, and I, I mentioned earlier, the art part of me, the artsy side of it. I love putting labels together. I just okay. finished one for a grill company that I can't, I'm not going to mention because they hadn't gotten it yet. That's but I customize labels. Exactly. I can put I your laugh. I'll put your logo on it. I'll oh, put my, a catchy oh, stain. Yep. Huh? <laughs> well, yours yours will look great on it. I may put your face on it too. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I can put anything on the label. A family picture with "Merry Christmas" from the dude and his crew. You know, I, I can put oh, anything on a label. So oh, that idea. Yeah, and so that that would be the other direction to go, or or customize. And it's, I don't know, it's a dollar, and it's a dollar more for the labels, and you have to call me. But you know, we're not talking about thousands and thousands of dollars. I heard on the news they said that it's projected that most that most families or most groups will spend a thousand dollars a person on Christmas. And I kind of looked around like. <laughs> I don't know what house they're looking at because I, you know, no I'm, kidding. <laughs> this, is, this is a tough time. So, but yeah, a neat little personalized things like that. Now we also do business cards. We do realty places. We can put anything on a label you want. No kidding. It's uh, okay, except, except for that. pictures in a bikini. Okay. Well, bummer. I mean, yeah. pictures of me in a bikini. No, I'll put a picture <laughs> of you in a bikini. Hey. Not me. Hey, hey, nobody <laughs> want to see that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to see that. Hey, brothers, I'm slowly brothers. finding out there's somebody forever. There's somebody who likes everything. Yes. True. Hey, Six so, Brothers wants to know which of yours goes best on brisket. 
brisket. I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give two answers. Oh gosh, I'm gonna give three answers. Original is always a staple. It makes everything better. If you're a little more into the, the, the heavy black pepper and boy, the rough look and like you're cooking it out on the range, the cow powder. Now, I said both of those, the thick meat, which is screened all the same. So you don't get the big chunks of black pepper. You get a table grade pepper that blends with everything. You get much better coverage. Okay. So, uh, you know, any one of those three, according to your liking. Right on. Uncle Steve, how did you get involved in the YouTube community? You know, it, it's a great story for me. And um, I, I don't know if he's watching or not. He, he may be already asleep. <laughs> Getting my, uh, I got my shake into one of the retailers down here called Bucky's. And uh, it's a popular place. Everybody likes to go. So I get an email from a guy and he says, hey, uh, my name's Papa Texas. Oh, Papa Texas. And I'm a YouTuber. And I found your shake at Bucky's and I'd like to do a couple cooking videos on it. And I was brand new to the whole YouTube thing. And I was, yeah, what, what, do, you, what do you want from me? So I put back, I said, well, sure. What do I need to do? And he said, nothing. I was just going to let you know I want to do a couple. And I just wanted your permission. And I was like, well, absolutely. Give me a shipping address and let me get you all of them so you can pick. Man, it exploded. Um, from there, he did two or three videos. Uh, Rob in Florida, uh, Pit Dog picked it up, and he did a couple. They got me hooked up with CJ and Dutch. They did some, and and from then on, it just bam, bam, bam. Right on. Wow. That, that's so, cool. That, that's, pop, that's, it, it all goes back to Papa, Texas. Okay, right on. Yeah, he's a great guy. He usually, he yeah. usually goes up about halfway through. Yeah. So, he, I think he's teach, he teaches classes and things like that, so he's usually pretty good. Uncle Steve, on all your shakes, what is your favorite? You know, it depends on what I'm eating, but just in general, you know, I'll, I'll go by what bottle I keep in the car. I keep original in the car for the kids. <laughs> okay. Sweet and spicier. Oh, yes. I think the, I the sweet and spicier to me, French fries, hamburgers, anything and everything you can think of. I had it on oh, fried oh, yeah. okra today. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome, man. I did. Yeah, it was Where? awesome. Here, here, yeah, here. Didn't bring me any. That's rude. Poor <laughs> Kelly. You have fried okra, really? I like okra. Where? <laughs> right. Well, fried okra is a toughie because if it's not done right, it just oh, it's slimy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, how about your girls? You you had mentioned the, the original. Is that uh, their favorite. Yeah, you know, they 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 love the original. And, and I think, to be honest, at first they loved it because they loved daddy. Um, I'm a single dad and I just cover my girls from head to toe with every bit of love you can. But they started really liking it. And so now even the two year old, she'll point at something on her plate and she'll say, shake, shake, <laughs> shake. And, and it's, a, it's a main staple here at the house. Uncle Steve, you're raising them right. <laughs> uh, hey, God, well, they, you know, the, the youngest one, the, the two year old, who incidentally is 55 years younger than I am. Um, wow. her, she, her name is Stevie. There's That's every right. there's yep. every chance if I if I can turn this into something real or more real than just something for fun for me. Maybe there'll be something left for them, you there know, you so. That's awesome, nice. dude. Totally awesome. Uncle Steve, what's your favorite thing to cook for you and the girls aside from cookies? And we'll get to the cookies here in a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I usually cook what they like. I, I'm a picky eater, but I can find a way to eat anything. Um, they love almost any kind of pasta. So I'll make a cream sauce pasta with a little bit of original on it. I may slice up some grilled chicken to put in it. Uh, they call it Chili's Noodles. <laughs> because we're, we're up class. We eat at Chili's on the big nights. Um, it's fancy. You know, they're, they're easing into the, they, they, they love when I do hamburgers out on the grill. Um, but that's, you know, we time is my problem. I get in or finish with our homework. We finish what we're doing. We have to eat. Then we have to head out, uh, take our showers, get ready for school. 
Um, but really, I think their favorite is, uh, are Chili's noodles. Nice. Wow. What shake do you put on them? Original. Original. Okay. Now I, I will. I'll eaters. mix it. I'll mix in some of the thick meat because okay. it's a heavy black pepper base, and and it goes really well with cream sauces. But gotcha. they don't know that, so they'll put it. Now I finally convinced them: taste it before you put shake on it. There you go. You know, because that's I've seen many of people. Oh, I'm going to try that, and they just cover it, and I'm like, yeah, I I already put some on there. Now you won't be able to eat that. So, yeah, and and that was one of the things that you touched on Saturday as well during that. Uh, yeah, uh, Josh's telethon uh, marathon thing was try it out before, and I thought that's yes. a great idea. I always try it out. You know, it's uh, one of my little. Uh, I try to come up with little catchy sayings. And one of them was uh, put just a little bit on at first. It's easy to add more, but it's real hard to pick off those little grains, <laughs> you know. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad my daughters are, are catching on to that. You know, what my favorite line is the yours, the emergency yeah. line. Yes, That's my favorite line. <laughs> I was sitting say, around one day. Yeah, I was sitting around. Now we've started. My, my people that help me put on labels, and we we put the labels on by hand. I have a little machine that does it, but to be honest, it takes too long to load and unload and set them and get them straight. I'm starting to get marketing wise. They're starting to move the labels up a little higher on the bottom. Okay. So, you know, you get it up there a little higher. Now we, we went to a bigger label on the, uh, on the big bottles. So it dropped back down, but that's all right. I got to ask you the cookies on Saturday. Yes. They look cool. And you put sweet and spicy on them? Is that what it was? You put a layer of sugar and then a layer of the sweet and spicy. And, yeah. uh, you know, people look at it and it, it, it's a brain tricker because you eat it, your brain is conditioned. You almost start to taste things before, you know, and before you smell them, before you, you think of a chocolate chip cookie, before you get close to it, your brain already starts processing it. Uh, it's a brain tricker. You eat it and you're not expecting that flavor mm. and it takes a second and then you're like, and this is good. Hey, this is real good. <laughs> and before you know, you've had four or five. Uh -huh. um, I don't necessarily know that it's a dessert cookie. You know, it <laughs> might be a, a, a sitting around with your meal cookie or something like that, but it's, it's good. Just okay. enough sweet, just enough spicy. What was the main cookie? Yeah, it was like Marcus. The, the cookie pie. base? Yeah, the cookie, cookie. chocolate chip. Yeah, chocolate I'm, a, I'm a chef. It was a Pillsbury slice and bake. <laughs> you, get it, you get it in a roll about that long in the refrigerated section at the grocery store. Yeah. Oh, is that how you do it? Oh, and you, 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 you yeah. peel the you, have, you delicately peel the plastic off, and then you <laughs> carefully slice into a oh, slice. You slice those discs and pop them out there. Oh, it's so good. You should do a YouTube wow. video on it. I'm not sure how to do it. I, well, actually, I thought about doing that on a Blackstone. Oh, that would be cool, man. <laughs> and, and you just, and actually, I've already tried a batch, but I tried the chocolate chip cookies, and I had it set just a little bit too hot, so the bottoms cooked too much. But, yeah, you just, you set it, in, you set it in medium heat, and you have a metal dish to put over the top, so it traps that heat, cooks the top also, and you can make cookies all day. There you go. Mm -hmm. hey. Did you need a permission? Oh, yeah. Since you was asking. Yeah, Kelly's going to make me a white Russian, everybody. I like Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> I like <Hi>. it. <laughs> so I always carry, I always have my bartender with me, my personal bartender. bartender. <clears throat> Uncle Steve, I want to shift gears here just a little bit. Okay. You and I were talking on the phone about a month ago, and you had mentioned competitions. Uh, yes. You, I, um, how, what is your... Have you done competitions yourself, and what was the experience like? I have. You know, it's interesting. I've I've done a little bitty, just a bunch of guys get together. I've sponsored a cooking team out of Houston for about 25 years, but I've always stepped back and left them alone, let them do their thing, because every cook, every barbecue cooker has their their secret methods. You know, they're, they're mad scientists when you get back there to the grill. So I just stay out of the way. Um, and, and, you know, and, it, and we get a kick out of it. We've, we've made the stage quite a few times out in Houston. And a lot of it was with the spicier on chicken. 
Um, okay, I can see that. But, yeah, but well, a couple of things on it. You know, when, some, when someone says, hey, we used your seasoning and we placed really well, uh, it's a great kick for me. At the same time, I know that that's not all they used. Gotcha. And there, there's not there's not a competition cook out there that just uses one seasoning. Boom, that's it. They all have their secret mixtures. Um, you know, I think the other thing would come to and I know some people that are big in cooking that don't do competitions because it, 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 they take it pretty seriously, as I do. And it's all in the luck of the draw. The person that the person that picks up that one particular bite if they have a piece of brisket and they happen to bite one inch to the left of the perfect spot on the slice, you know, that, that, there you go. So they're, they're fun as long as you take them with a grain of salt and just, you know, just kind of, hey, this is great. Oh, we did pretty good that time. Kind of like hey. it's always good. It's always fun for the winners. <laughs> Daddy Dutch Barbecue just said he used your pig powder and he won. He did. He did. And you know what? And he actually used it 100%. So I guess I have to eat my words. That was the introduction. That was the introduction of the pig powder. Okay. Uh, that was the first time we had done anything with it. And when he called me and mess or he, he messaged me and messed with me back and forth and then finally told me, man, I was, I was speechless. Now I will say the seasoning is a part of it, but Man, the cook and his style and what they do and how they follow and how they cut the meat, that's huge. You know, so we, we can add a little flavor, but, uh, you know, what, that, what what Dutch does and what some of those other guys do behind the scenes to cook it, that, that that's where the magic happens. Right. Yeah, and what Dutch did, is, can I tell you, is he took thing of ribs and instead of using mustard, he used oil over it. And then put the mm -hmm. seasoning on, cooked it, and then when he brought it out, he put butter over it, then honey, and yeah. then more of the pig powder, and wrapped it up and threw it back in. Oh man, sounds terrible. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I know, oh. I'm just not hungry anymore. I just lost my appetite. Oh <laughs> exactly. yeah, Awful. thanks, Kent. Appreciate Awful. that, buddy. Appreciate wow. it. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. It He's is. the griller. I'm not the griller. No, I, no. She's a hell of a cook, though. I'm a, I'm a good cook. Yeah. I just, I don't understand the grilling. I don't do that. White trash no. enchiladas right there. If you ever want white trash enchiladas. Oh, I'll, bake, I'll bake the hell out of a cake. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. If it put, goes in the oven, I'm good. <laughs> Uncle Steve, have you ever been a judge? Yes. Yes. Uh, even before. <laughs> all right. There are a couple people in the chat that know things that no one else does. Uh, I will let everybody in on this. Long before Uncle Steve Shake, I was a beauty pageant judge. <laughs> oh. And I would I, I got up to judging state pageants. Um, had a great time doing it, of course. I was very uh, very nice about it. Um, but one of the times I was judging a, a a pageant in a town, and they came over and they said, "Hey, does anybody know anything about food?" One of the barbecue judges had to call in sick. <laughs> I, I know about food. Oh, yeah. And so I got over there and started judging. Since then, I've done barbecues, chili cook-offs. Um, every time you do it, you learn more about it. You know, I, I, I love doing it. But, uh, of course, then again, it gets into the judging and how do you tell somebody – especially if they're a buddy. Hey, I didn't like what you did that time. Uh, I, I will say the chili, if, if I'm ever a judge in a chili cook-off and you're in it, don't think that the more beer you add to your chili, the better it tastes. Uh, I've gotten a couple that, uh-oh. Hi, Hi, beautiful. This is my beautiful seven-year-old daughter, Lainey. Hi. She's as sweet as can be. Is it Laney okay. or Rainey? Laney or Rainey? Laney. L A I N E Y. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm, okay. I thought I All right, Rainey. hold on. Yeah. It's okay. This is my 11 year old, Alila. Hi. She's my sweetheart. I love her to death. Y'all doing okay? Oh, no. show, sweetie. Um, they're dragging Stevie up here, but 
Hey, I, I got to make them part of my life because I want to be part of theirs. Yeah, yes. absolutely. But um, um, yeah, go ahead. Somebody wanted us to ask you about the picture. The picture. Did you see? That? All right. Hey, I, I have no secrets. I have no shame. Wait, hold on. Come here, pumpkin. <laughs> There we go. From, oh, from Daddy Dutch Barbecue. Hi, Stevie. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi, Stevie. <laughs> Hello. Right. Y'all head back in there because this is, I'm not on for long. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. Get a little one. And get her baba. So going through college, I was good friends with a lot of um, young ladies in a sorority. <laughs> and that, so was I. <laughs> you gotta live. And, <laughs> yeah. And they convinced me that it would be good for them to enter me as their sorority's entry into a college calendar contest. Oh boy. <laughs> Does this calendar exist? And, and, yeah, is it yes. still around? Yes. <laughs> they took, hey, they it, they took a couple of pictures. I don't want to And see I it. didn't like them. Yeah. I took a picture with a camera sitting in the bathroom on the bathroom cabinet and it turned out good. And it's a, it's a typical eighties. You talk about hair. That's just, Oh, just <laughs> a nice leather jacket with a little gold chain. And I'm kind of, not the crew. It's just, I couldn't make that look better. You know, it's one of those pictures that everybody has four or five in their life where they look at and they say, Man, that picture's so good. That doesn't look like me. And, and that was it. So I was having a wild night and uh, ended up showing Kent that picture. And, give, and, and so he has a copy now. Oh. And, and, it, and it, it floats around. I'm texting so, Kent gonna get right it. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually look, everybody, keep it. Look. Oh, yeah, well, in sexy Steve. Hey. I keep it, and I have another. This was in college. I have. I did a retake of it about five or six years ago. Same leather jacket. Like I said, I had the five head going on. Just all so, and just for fun, because you know, again, I'm not vain. I, looks come and go. Personality sticks with you forever until you get old and you're mean. But um. So I, I laugh about it. Now there's another picture of me in a speedo swimsuit floating around that I'm not going to let out, but <laughs> that's a little too uh, a little too revealing. Oh, oh my gosh, we got some great comments out there. Magic Steve, See? yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, except I, I don't have the dance moves. I picture Freddie Mercury. <laughs> yeah. Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. God. That's awesome. Mm. All right. Let's shift gears again. I'm a huge okay. fan of the competition line. Yes. How, how did that come about? Tell, tell us a little bit about that, please. Uh, ego. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say just flat ego. Uh, well, I take it back. No, no, no. It started with, with Kent. He emailed or he, he messaged me and he said, hey, I have put together a, some, a flavor for pork using all your stuff plus just a little bit extra and uh it's outstanding it's the best i've ever had and i said well man hey and he and i were i, I felt, we feel like we're good buddies i said man well kent what, what do you want me to do with it you want to send me the recipe and i'll i'll mix some up and bottle it up and send it to you he said no you've done enough for people that i care about so i'm gonna give it to you I just want you, I want you to know in case you want to mix it up. Well, I, I mixed some up and he was right, man. It was outstanding. And, um, but, I'm, but I'm give credit where credit is due. So uh, without uh, unbeknownst to him, you might say, I put his name on the bottle. Uh, I was just then, that, yeah. yeah. Sent him a picture of the label to make sure. And, and he approved it, approved of the label and approved of the flavor. So, that came out with the pig powder, the competition pig powder. And he, he of course, had a couple of names that would have he would have liked. And um, but oh, we God. stuck with the competition cow powder because I wanted it to have some substance to it, you know. And after that, I thought, well, I have pig. And I need beef. And I, I'd watched a bunch of the guys cooking with beef and cooking all with them and the big chunks of black pepper and how they love it. And, just, and I thought, 
if I want to be in that part of the game, you know, taken legitimately, if you will, I got to come up with something. So we, we mixed around and played around and sent out samples and try this and let me know what you think. And I may have sent out 20 sample packs and I took the notes that people would send to me. And by reading over those notes, I almost had the exact recipe just from their notes. Wow. I made a couple of adjustments. We did that. And I thought, well, and now I have the cow. <laughs> Thanksgiving's coming up. I have to do bird. So I took a, uh, I kind of, I took a, one of our bases and uh, made some adjustments of that and send out some samples, got the idea, you know, the ideas. Yeah. And, and what people liked and what they didn't and uh, came back and put that together. So that's where we are right now. Uh, I think the, the best part with the competition blends is because I mix in, I don't mix a, a 500 pounds at a time or a thousand pounds at a time. If I get 20 replies to it, boy, this is great. Wish it taste, wish it had a little bit more garlic. Mm -hmm. okay. That's on me. I can, I can increase the garlic a little bit. And, I, and so they can move around. Now I haven't moved the recipes for, for pig powder at all. I haven't moved and I won't do that because that's Kent's. Uh, I haven't moved the cow powder in probably a month and a half. Okay. And it's really, it's stuff you won't be able to taste and say, oh man, now this tastes like da, 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 da. You'll taste it and you'll go, oh, I remember that. That's good. So okay. those are my competition lines. Yeah. I used the bird powder on my turkey mm -hmm. and it was good. Oh boy. I smoked it. I actually smoked it with oak. Because that's all I yeah, had. Oh, wow. But, yeah. uh, which I was like, oh, shoot. I'm not sure this is going to work. But, man, it was just fantastic. It yeah. didn't last long. It's gone the next I, I'm real. I'm real happy with all three of them. All three of the competition blends, uh, I'm just real pleased with. I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to put my name on them. Right on. What, uh, what rub did you use for Thanksgiving? Or rubs? Uh, shakes, shakes. We did we did Thanksgiving out of town. Uh, I had a my, my eighty year old mom has on the other CO, day. yeah COPD one hundred and eighty five yeah has COPD yep. has two <laughs> things where she can't get out and get around. So we went there. They actually ordered a smoked turkey, and that was fine because if I'm not cooking it here at my house, it's tough. Um, we did end up using a lot of original and a lot of bird powder. So I could absolutely see that. Yeah, that yeah original it was good on everything as far as I'm concerned. It really does. Oh, yeah. I yeah. even had it on popcorn. I was just actually sitting here thinking that, you know, I always have pickled eggs. Yeah. In my yep. fridge. And I've never thought of putting that in my juice. What do you think, Uncle Steve? What would be perfect for her for Christmas that her brother <laughs> could get her for pickled eggs? I make pickled eggs all the time. There's always a yes. container in my fridge. Always. You know. But you already have the tangy. You already have a little bit of the tang, so you wouldn't use gator shake. No. Um, I don't know that the sweet and spicier would go well with it. I'd probably say original. Yeah. Yeah. The original or spicier? Or spicier? Yeah, yeah, spicier. The spicier is good too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I think so. Style. Yeah. All right. I know what I'm getting. I like it. Spicier right. came along because my friends made fun of me. <laughs> I got, I got, I was handing out the original and they said, well, this is great, but I need some kick. I need some spice. I went, fine, I'll get you some spice. And I went <laughs> home and immediately, I yeah, yeah, immediately mixed it. Now it's not ghost pepper spice hot. Yeah. It's not burn your face. Because I have to look at, uh, and I hate to put it on the dollar, what can I sell to more people? Because sure. I love doing this, but if it was costing me tons and tons of money, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I would rather sell to 80% of the people that like some heat than the 10% that want to have their face melt off or the 10% that, that, you know, if they have regular salt, mm, that's a little spicy for me. You know, I, I have to look at those percentages. Yeah. But I think that's where the sweet and spicier comes into play. Because yeah. it's sweet, definitely temper. You get so I when I think of, of taste, it's kind of like layers on your tongue, right? So yes. I'll get this, this 
the, the I'll get the spice first. And yeah. I'll get sweet on the tongue, and it's just like mm-hmm. this is perfect because I, I I'm I like spice Tuesday. too, not as much as her. <laughs> yeah. But I do like it. <laughs> I do. And, love spice. But my favorite is rapidly becoming the sweet and the the sweetness. Yeah. Spice. Yeah. I know if CJ popped in, CJ loves my thick meat. But uh, I could, uh, uh, actually, you want to hear something funny? I gave her a thing of thick meat. Not I didn't give her uh-huh, thick meat. Uh-huh. I gave her a thing of thick meat. I Seriously? gave her. A, I, I got. I got a bottle. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, my thick meat is on the tip of everybody's tongues. It's just, just <laughs> right, right there. Oh, God, I'm Whoa. so sorry. Oh, Ain't nobody want to see that. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a, that's a family show. Huh? Uh, yeah, right. Uncle Steve, you ever have any Oof, fails? Darnell, Vita yeah. Latina. You'll get all the spice he wants. <laughs> Add a Latina. girl. Add a girl. <laughs> Vita Latina, you get all the spice you want. <laughs> you ever have a fail in a shape? Yes. Like, oh, uh, I had one recently. Okay. Uh, trying to step into an area that I was not as familiar with. I tried to put together just a basic SPG, shake, pepper, garlic. Mm-hmm. And I sent samples out. And to be honest, I got some pretty good responses, but nothing great. And I'm not, I'm not about, I'm not going to jump into something that I don't get great responses from. So as far as seasoning wise, now I say that, and then uh, Lep from Leprechaun TV yeah, it starts messaging me, hey, I took this and this and this with your SPG samples and it is the greatest thing of all time. So you've got to make me some. And I'm like, Oh, where'd I put those notes? So (laughs) I can't say that I won't attempt it again, you know? So, uh, but other than that, cooking for people and not paying attention and putting too much, I had a bunch of relatives over. I made a uh, steak and mushrooms and evidently forgot that I'd already put shake on the mushrooms and came back and hit them again. <laughs> and oh, God, they, they were bad. Up at a mushroom oh, they were horrible. <laughs> Patrick wonders if you can send uh, thick meat to prison for Uncle Pickles. <laughs> All right, next you know, question. <laughs> yeah, that, that is, that is, that's, that's worded carefully. That's Very worded wow. carefully. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So uh, that, well, of course, I can, but in order to get it through the prison, uh, the, the, the security, it has to have a certain amount of cilantro in it. And, <laughs> and you know. <laughs> that's a question coming up for you because, you know, we keep track of this and it's sufficient. Yes. I know what your answer is, but I have to officially ask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, it is four to four right now on Team Cilantro versus non. It's not but about to be. What does that mean? <laughs> What's that? Team Cilantro versus non. What does that mean? Yeah, so right there. So I ask every guest if they like cilantro or not. No. What? I am not a fan. Rosemary cilantro. Oh, my I'm just, God. I'm not. No, I, I, I put it, it in over, everything we'll and I eat all, it anyway, we'll next but Thank I don't love it. See, look, we're going to chill with Coleman. He hates cilantro too. So see, he's no oh, cilantro. It's going to be six to four. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, I so I have a question for you. This is, yeah. Where's cry. the chalk? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I, you, don't, you don't get chalk. So right, my funny. question is, so for me, I've always wondered, you know, what what goes well with this, what goes well with that, blah blah blah. You you have a chart or anything on your website that says gator shake goes well with fish? And, no, no, um, I don't, because as soon as I say something goes well with something, they'll only use it on that and won't try it on anything else. Oh. My, give me one second, real quick. Yep. Hello. You don't like cilantro? No. Oh my god. No. I don't. Kevin loves it. Hey, give he me one it. second. You're fine, Uncle Steve. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I I was like going, okay. I know Uncle Steve doesn't well, like cilantro, but I'm sure Kelly does because I've seen her no. use it before. I, 
I always use it. I do. I will put it in it and I will suck it up and I will eat it. But yeah, no. No? No. no. I was going to say four sticks down there. All my cilantro papers. Oh, Thank cilantro. <laughs> I heard Uncle Pickles in prison likes a good cilantro. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm sure that that's prison talk for something. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Uncle Steve, this has been a blast. I have had so much fun. Any advice? For, any advice for YouTubers or people that are just starting out with a business? You know, uh, I, to be honest, anywhere and everywhere. Uh, I am. I wish I could call myself a YouTuber. I don't know the the the, the, the things that I listen to people talk about. I have no idea. Uh, but my channel uh, is tough for me to promote other than we have over 500 cooking videos from people in the chat. So, but, but as far as me putting it and pushing it, I, I don't have, I think I have 385 subscribers. Oh. I have over 500 videos and everyone says, oh, or, or, or they, the views are coming up. I don't have that many views, but if you take all the views from all the videos that we have, I, I don't know if I can count that high. Um, keep at it and be yourself. You know, I, I, don't get on and be fake. Don't be on and pretend because you'll get caught and you'll get called out real fast. Trolls Show out what you have um, and and go with it from there. Be real. She, all of a sudden, she wants to do the six foot thing. Uh -huh. I might get yeah. called out. I might get called out. I'm going to be too close. Yeah. Uh, all right. You know, there's going to be a movie one of these days about you. Yes. What, uh, sorry, what, uh, who would play you? You know, if you're old enough to remember when I was young, I looked a lot like the Dr. Pepper guy. Um, <laughs> And was told that. Um, oh my! God. You know what I'm talking about. It's the most original soft drink ever in the whole. And uh, Doctor, you remember that guy? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I really don't know. Um, I'm thinking the kid from a Christmas story. Kid from a Christmas Ralphie. story. Ralphie. 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 There you go. You know, I don't know. I, I, of course, I could say uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, <laughs> I definitely see that. Yeah. John, John Holmes. Um, I can say I can say all kinds of people, John but uh, Holmes, you know, huh? it's, funny, it's funny you <laughs> should mention that because John Holmes was on one of kids. Ooh, lives, Jack Lemon. Uh, well, he's, he's oh Jack Lemon would be a good one, but John Holmes was on one of Kent's lives not too long ago. <laughs> David Hasselhoff when he was younger. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Chris Meesman Farm says Jack Lemon. Okay. It says the Hoff. <laughs> the Hoff. <laughs> Patrick uh, from Ooh. Patty Joe says Jack Nicholson. Uh, yeah, I can see him. Hey, when I was on the hot seat, somebody said Danny DeVito for me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. I'm six well, you know, Yeah, and that, that's one of those things where it's, and, and I'll put it as, you know, right now I'm single. Jack and, Black. Yeah, it could be, but no. Um, <laughs> I'm single and occasionally people say, hey, I, I have the perfect person for you. And when you get to see and meet that person, it kind of lets you know what that person, the one that's setting you up, thinks of you. So, um, and actually I have the chat right over here. And so I'm looking at some of them going, oh, really? You think, okay, so you think that's me? Okay, well, you think, and, and it helps to kind of keep me in the right category. That's funny. Love it. All right. I've already asked. I'll ask again. Team cilantro, yes, no. No. Yeah. No, if I were a rabbit and wanted to make my breath even worse, I would eat lots of cilantro. I don't like greenage in my food. I'm real picky about textures, but especially the greenage. No, no, don't need it. Okay, so I have a question yeah. because this is my first time on, so I don't know what Uncle Steve is all about. 
again, I'm, I can throw my little steak on my Weber, but mm -hmm. are, what do you prefer? Actual grill or something like a Traeger? So I have both. I just don't, I, I'm not sure how to use my Traeger. So I don't use it. Anymore. My problem with, with all that is that I don't have enough experience on most of them because I don't have the time. Okay. As I get older, as these kids move up out of the house and I have three or four hours to, to, to put something on and time it, most of the stuff I make is fast. Mm -hmm. I have an old beat up members mark gasser with probably the first set of grill grates. If anyone from grill grates is listening. <laughs> Send them away. I probably have the first set of grill grates that don't even fit. They hang out the end. I'm too lazy to cut them. And I will fire a steak up or a hamburger up, and I will put, you know, two and a half on one, two and a half on the other. Both sides get whatever shake I'm using, and it's awesome. So I'll, I'll put it I'll, same thing. I have to I have to do quick and easy. Okay. And that's just because of time. I don't have I don't have the time. Yeah, I would prefer uh, Weber any day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing okay. wrong with doing it with the Traeger, but do you have three or four hours? Yeah. 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 Unless your Traeger also has a grill on it, and that might be a different. Mm -hmm. There's a really cock pot. Shake, shake, shake. shake yeah. cock pot. That was a good question. No. Yeah. I again, I, I have. I would love to use my Traeger more. I just don't know how. So. Yeah. He's a good brother over there to show her how to do it. <laughs> Uncle yeah. Steve, this has been a pleasure, man. Really man, I've loved it. I, I thank you so much for this. I think that you're you're for the so my stepdad is the man who has everything, and on Saturday I loaded up on on your shakes because I, I, I actually just processed your order and shipped it out yesterday. Oh, right on. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah, I need a sticker for my suitcase. Yeah. Uh, Next time, give me a sticker, <laughs> would you please? You got it. Her. She wants one. My she, suitcase. She has two suitcases. It's got like all these stickers on it. From everywhere we oh, go. Well, I'll get you. I'll get you one. Yeah. It's my suitcase. I will mention stickers. Uh, for for all the stickers I've sent out and all the samplers and all that thing, I have about eight stickers. Really? My oh, refrigerator is my old beat up refrigerator is starving for stickers. <laughs> There you go, guys. Well, when so, I get stickers at work, I will send them to you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. They're all going to be alcohol related. I'm sorry. But. Um, I'm, I can barely see right through, uh, but I can see the the uh, the chat. And I do want to put, uh, I wanted to say something. Uh, Eastwind Farms said, does Steve have any charities he gives to? Um, almost any and all. I don't do a lot of money donation but I do a lot of shake donation. If I owned a used car dealer or a car dealership, I'd donate a car. If I owned a jewelry store, I'd donate jewelry. Sure. Uh, things like thing, but things that are close to me at home. But uh, my my daughter's school has a Veterans Day, so I make up 150 uh, celebration. I make up 150 bottles with veteran stickers on them of shake to hand out up there. That's cool. Um, you know, the donations like that are, are the ones that I stick to. And I think that's one of the big things that Shake has done for me. Pandemic wise, I haven't drawn a real paycheck from my main business since last March. Wow. I own a children's gymnastics company that operates in the schools. No schools means no check. Uh, about that time, the Shake business blew up and took took over some of that. But what it did mainly for me, it filled that void of being able to give back. It filled that void of having something to do and, you know, keeping me busy, keeping my mind going. It has grown into something now that, like I said, it pays a lot of the bills for us, but um, mentally just as much. So charity wise, I don't write a check to UNICEF. You know, I, I don't do the things like that. I give back on an individual basis. There's there's a hand, hey, hey, back up a little bit. <laughs> There's about 25 different guys that either live under a bridge or stand on a corner and do what they can. And they know that every time I come by, they're getting a bottle of shake. That's so cool. I, I get back in, in those kind of ways. I, I've tried to do some, some, some fun stuff for Josh. Um, 
you know, when someone calls me and says, Hey, we're having a, we're having a raffle. Can you, can you donate some seasoning? Just tell me how much, you know, I'm, I'm there. And it does help marketing and it helps that. But more than that, it gives me that inside feeling of, Hey, I'm getting to help somebody. So yeah, I, know I just, I wanted people. to answer that. So yeah, I know several people who just from watching my show and on Facebook order from you as well. Yeah. The, the U S so, yeah. you know, that that's great. That, that's great. And I, and I love that you do that. Like yeah. the other day with Josh, that was so cool. You know, jo I've never met Josh and, and just yeah. like me, I've never met you, but I feel close. I feel like friends and Hey, I had a grandpa that was like this, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Yep. And someone yep. that I've made that connection with, if I can help you, man, I'm there. If I can't, I'm going to stand right next to you and take whatever tail kicking you're taking with you. But, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. I got you, too. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Everybody give each other a big hug. Everybody big group hug. Uh, uh, any, anything else you'd like to say, Uncle Steve? Man, yeah. Hey, quick things. Good. Check out my YouTube channel. I don't care. I mainly, you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. Look at all the videos that are on there. If you're thinking, hey, I'm going to cook bone marrow, how do I do it? Look yeah. up there. Keith Baytag has a bone marrow recipe on there. Um, check out that. Leave some comments. If you make a cooking video, hashtag me in it because as crazy as things are, um, I, I, it's hard for me to have time to sit down and check them all, but if I'm hashtag in it, boom, I get it right there. Uh, Chris, my favorite handgun is the 50 caliber desert Eagle. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know, because if I can't hit, if I can't shoot you with it, I can take it and beat you to death with it. Cause it's so big. Um, Chris Kelly just bought a Glock. So yeah, but uh, you know, that, that's it. Be nice to each other. Be kind to each other know that you don't know the person you're talking to's backstory. Give them a little benefit, give them a little love and uh, we'll have a better place. There you go. Thank you so much, Uncle Steve. Guys, thank y'all. Really I look forward to talking to you soon. You got it. Talk to you soon, brother. Thanks, Thanks buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up tonight. I want to thank everybody for showing up. Our guest, Uncle Steve, thank you so much. My sister from another mister, a very best friend, Cowbell. Love you, girl. Love you. I'm not Monica. I'm sorry. I don't no, know what I'm not doing. Monica. I don't know. So, uh, your Cowbell did a great job. Kent, thank you for showing up. Appreciate it. You're Guys, welcome, we'll see bro. you next week. We have actually next week, we have two guests as well. Uh, one guy named Drew. Uh, and another person who does Indian food. She cooks. She's from <gasps> India, and she cooks Indian food. Is she? Yes. Ooh. That she's so sweet. She's so yeah. sweet. Yeah. So Kelly knows that she makes a great biryani. That, oh, God, I love. So she's our guest next week. So Is she cook? no, I should try to get over here to cook. Damn. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Really do appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick, Laura, Coleman. Coleman, coleslaw does not suck. It does not. Bye, guys. <laughs> <Good night. laughs> Take care.